comment. Raise your hand. Keep it up for a minute. Let me get everybody. Everybody today. Good. Good. I don't have really any different comments than I had after the game. Uh, obviously, the last game was a very physical, tough, if you like old-fashioned football. Uh, I guess that's what it was. Um, we obviously have a lot of work to do and you know, some areas of our team. And I think the biggest thing is you can't have any kind of relief syndrome after a big emotional game, especially when you have a really good team coming up uh, and a new challenge that uh, we all need to respond to. Uh, it's really great that the defense got recognized National Player of the Week, which we did the same thing with them um, internally, and Ryan Anderson and J.K. Scott on special teams, uh, and Ryan Anderson on defense by the SEC. Um, you know, we're excited to be back home and, and playing. You know, this game here at Ryan Denny Stadium. Um, I think it's always a challenge for us to uh, respond in the right way. Um, a different kind of team. Uh, they have played better and better each and every week uh, that they've played. Uh, they're probably playing their best football of the season right now. Pretty obvious with their win over Texas A&M, uh, how good they are playing right now. So um, their quarterback has done a really good job for them all year long. He's kind of the center of what they do in terms of how much he runs the ball and his effectiveness as a runner as well as being a, a very effective passer. Um, they've got, you know, Fred Ross is a very good receiver and an outside threat that uh, can create explosive plays for them. And, uh, they've been able to run the ball effectively and defensively. They create a lot of issues and problems in terms of negative plays and how aggressive they are. And they're very well coached and good special teams. You know, Dan has done a great job there for, you know, a lot of years. And uh, we've always had some really difficult games. And uh, that's well, that will be our expectation in this game. Okay, we'll start over on the left side with Rainer. Pass coverage has improved uh, dramatically over the last three games. What do you attribute that to uh, since the Arkansas game? Well, it wasn't bad before the Arkansas game. You know, just we didn't play very well in the Arkansas game. We didn't play very well in the Ole Miss game. And the other games, it's been fairly decent. Um, you know, I think there's always things that we can improve on. I mean, I think when you play a uh, a spread team, it's an entirely different type of, uh, whether it's RPOs uh, that they throw, play action passes that they throw that make it much more difficult to defend. So uh, it's a bit of a generalization just to say, you play good in this game, you play bad in that game. Uh, I, I think that we all need to focus on what we need to do to improve and um, we'll be challenged in this game. And um, you know, when you play these kind of teams that have a lot of run pass options, uh, the key and responsibility on the perimeter is really critical to stopping the run as well as the passes. So uh, that would be a real challenge for us this week. Back left with Cecil. Coach, obviously JK had a good game against LSU, punt the ball. How did you evaluate the special teams overall? Um, well, we missed a field goal, but, um, you know, Kickoff coverage and kickoff return are two areas that we need to do uh, a little better job in. Our punt return has been pretty consistent this year. The punt coverage has been pretty good. JK has done a good job. So um, there's areas of, that are pretty good, and there's areas that we need to improve. Uh, the one kickoff return got out to the 35-yard line, which we misfit the wedge. So when I say there's things that we have to work on, there's things in special teams that fall into that category as well. Uh, and kickoff and kickoff return would be two areas that we need to make improvement in. Come back over here with Aaron. From the outside looking at it, it looks like Ryan Anderson is one of your more consistent players the last few years. But he seems to get overshadowed nationally, attention-wise, by Tim and Jonathan and those guys. What has he brought to your team this year? Well, Ryan has always been a really good player for us. And you know he's recognized by um, the SEC is a player of the week this week. So, um, you know, first of all, he's a good leader. Uh, he's a smart player, really plays his position well, whether we're playing regular or his role in nickel. Uh, he understands the pass coverage part of what we have to do, which 
I think for an outside backer is really critical to have some guys that can do that. Um, but his leadership, his pass rush ability, his ability to play the run, he's a very, very, very good all-around football player that um, has done a fantastic job for us. Back on the left with John Zaner. Uh, you said you had some pretty hateful guys on this defense. I'm wondering if you can elaborate and kind of kind of what that means. And, and also, they had so many gut checks in that game, the, the mental toughness they showed to kind of keep coming through. Well, I think to be a good competitor, you know, you got to have a little stuff in your neck, if you know what that means, or I don't know if I have to explain that to I hope not. Um, and that's what you know, good defensive players are. Um, you know, I'll, I'll tell you a story, which, you know, when I was in Cleveland and we were getting ready for the draft, we got this great idea that we were going to hire this psychological guy to come in and give these guys a tap test, you know, to, for their psychological disposition. Well, the nine best players and defensive players in the draft that year had D taps. And I looked at the guy and I said, what, what are we hiring these guys to do? You know, we want them to be aggressive. We want them to be competitive, not, not in the real world, but at least on the football field. So these characteristics are important in defensive players. And, you know, we're evaluating these guys as, you know, what they're like in Sunday school, which may not be the same. <laughs> so we're, we're, we want a guy that's going to go hit a guy that weighs 250 pounds running downhill as hard as he can hit him. So let me let me figure out what, what, what is a DTAP a good thing or a bad thing. So even though we have an expectation for our guys to represent themselves off the field in a first class way, I think good defensive football players all have a competitive edge about them that um, requires a lot of mental toughness, a lot of physical toughness. Um, and they got to have a lot of resiliency because sometimes you go in the game when difficult circumstances, sudden change occurs, whatever it might be, and to respond the right way to those things takes a, um, the right kind of psychological disposition. And I think we just have a, a lot of guys on our defensive team that are very, very competitive. Come back over here with Tony. Coach Bradley Bozeman's been one of your highest graded players on offense this season. How much? Do you guys lean on his uh, consistency every week? Where, where do you get this information from? I mean, do you get the grades every week, or how do we know that he's the highest? I, I'm, I'm kind of anxious. I mean, pro football focus. Pro, pro, pro football grades. focus. It's also on the website. Um, it's not our grades. It's somebody else's grades. Right? Yeah, I just I, wonder. I'm assuming he's probably off on one of y'all. No, he. Well, not to dispute what you say, he has been one of the highest players. <laughs> but I just wonder where you got your information. Uh, he's played very well. Uh, he's got better every week. Uh, very difficult. And last week, we a lot of line calls and stuff we couldn't hear. Um, guys were trying to make line calls and they couldn't hear, which you know certainly can be a lesson to our fans in terms of how they can affect the game because. Um, it, it affected us on some plays and created some negative plays where we didn't always block the right guys, but it was not a lack of communication. It was an inability to communicate because of the noise, but uh, Bradley's probably been the key sort of reason that that has not been an issue for us because he's done a really good job, not only doing his job, but helping everybody else do their job better. In the middle, Michael. Talked a lot about the competitiveness and the hunger to be a good defensive uh, player against the run. How have they done discipline wise, staying uh, disciplined against some of these teams like Mississippi State that will do different things? Well, the, the, this is a totally different um, sort of way you have to play. Um, and when you're playing a team that the quarterback can run the ball, it's almost like the old Wildcat um, where they had a running back, a quarterback, except you knew that guy couldn't throw. Well, this guy can throw. And uh, these running quarterbacks that uh, they have a significant amount of quarterback runs create a whole different set of keys and responsibilities that uh, take a tremendous amount of discipline as to you know, who's closing on the dive, who has the quarterback, uh, and 
Uh, I think that is a real key to having a chance to be successful. And these guys know what they're doing with it. You know, Dan has been in this for a long, long time, all the way back to Tebow in Florida. Uh, so it's not like they're going to mess it up. Uh, so we have to make sure we do a good job of staying disciplined in terms of who has what. And there's also a pass that goes with that most of the time. So some defender is going to have to be defending that part of it, as well as the option parts of whether it's the zone read or read tweet Q power or whatever play they choose to run. Right behind him, Chris Walsh. <coughs> I think it's pretty obvious that Ruben Foster would be a good linebacker during any age of football, but the way that the game has changed the last few years, it's, it, are his skill sets sort of ideal for the way offenses are going? Well, I, I think that, first of all, Ruben plays well whether we're playing against a direct run team uh, or a spread team. Uh, I think that there were guys in the past that would play better against direct run teams and would struggle more um, when you got spread type teams because you, you, you got to play more effectively in space. Uh, so Ruben just happens to be a guy that can do both of those things very well. Uh, C.J. Mosley was the same kind of player here. So um, does that mean that he's a more effective guy, maybe more all around, more versatile would be a better way to say it. Um, but he's certainly done a really good job for us all year long in both scenarios of uh, whatever we played. And uh, he makes a lot of calls and makes all the calls and gets us in the right thing and has a really good understanding of football, which I think you know, help, helps him from a key and diagnose standpoint to really react quickly uh, to what he has to do. Come back over here with Charlie. Just want to ask where you've seen Anthony Averett progress the most since the start of the season. Well, I think he's played well for us all year long and hasn't given up a lot of plays and um, plays smart, uh, keeps people cut off, um, kind of silently goes about his business and does a really good job for us. And, um, We've been pleased with him all year long. Uh, I think his knowledge and experience certainly has been helpful to him, and that's probably enhanced his ability to play with a little more consistency as we go along. But uh, we think he's really played well all year. Stay over here with Ben. What kind of progression has Lester Cotton made this year, fundamentally or, or technically? Well, you know, I, I still think we have work to do uh, in some of the areas of our team, and. Uh, I made mention of the fact that it was tough on the offensive line in some of the scenarios we had last week, and uh, that's something that we certainly need to work on and get fixed. But you know, Lester had made steady improvement, and uh, certainly like to see him play aggressive and physical all the time, uh, and finish, uh, and be more confident in what he's required and supposed to do. Uh, but he has gotten better and better at that as the year has gone on. Stay right here with Alex. Two more, Alex and then Joe. I actually had two questions real quick. Uh, Tony Brown's one of those guys that's you know got all the talent in the world, but just hasn't been able to put it together yet. How have you seen him progress, you know, grow, and maybe even off the field to get to this position? Well, he's done. He did a good job in the game uh, this past week. Um, just have to work on his confidence and consistency and what he's doing. Uh, and sometimes, you know, a little bit of technique would be helpful to him. Uh, guy's a really good competitor. Uh, just got to channel his energy in the right direction, which he's made tremendous progress at. He's done well in school, um, kind of, you know, getting things right on and off the field. And uh, we're happy with the progress that he's made. And hopefully he'll continue to develop a better understanding of how important when you're on a team, your role on the team affects everyone in terms of what you do so that uh, you can continue to be a good teammate to uh, those that you're playing with. I want to ask about uh, Keaton Anderson, you know, personal protector. We saw he made a big tackle on special teams. What has he kind of done this year in that role for you? He's done a fantastic job in that role. Uh, he's a very bright guy. And, um, you know, when we're in our pump protection, it takes a little bit of understanding from the PP. He is the quarterback of the group. So whether they present eight man, seven man, six man box, uh, determines what kind of protection we're going to have, who can free release as a flyer. Uh, and he, he's been one of the guys that has done um, 
extremely well in putting us in the right protection, uh, as well as improving the coverage pattern when, when it, you know, when we have the opportunity to do it. So um, he's done a really, really good job, and he's a good athlete and can run down the field. So when we get him out fast, it's uh, like having another gunner out there. Two more, Mark, and then Joe. Yeah, just after watching the film, how would you assess uh, Mika Fitzpatrick play at, at safety in the first game as well as you know making the calls and doing the technical stuff? He did a good job. Uh, Mika played well in the game, and uh, we're happy with uh, the adjustments that he made. He didn't make a lot of mental errors, and um, it really, he really played well. Uh, and you know, he's a bright guy that is a good competitor and really prepares well for a game and. Uh, I think his disposition probably helped him be able to do that, and uh, I was really pleased with um, the way the way he played in the game. Last one in the back with Joe. Hey, Coach. Uh, whether it's been the the player only meetings or, or how self critical they've been of themselves this season, this group has been so focused, so locked in. And I know you preach that to all your teams, but how has this team distinguished itself in that regard, and relative to other teams you've coached? Well, I think that that's all determined by how you finish. I think it's uh, determined by the entire body of work uh, because each week we have a little different challenge that presents us, whether it's playing at LSU last week in a very difficult environment or coming back home and playing against a very good Mississippi State team to be able to maintain and not be vulnerable to external factors and uh, other things that uh, make you understand that it's important that every time you go out there you, you're sort of making a statement about who you are and what you can do and um, to do that with consistency throughout the whole season uh, is a challenge for any team. Some of our teams have done well, some not as well, but um, that's, that's still that they've done it so far. Um, but you got to sort of evaluate on the total body of work when it's all said and done in terms of how they continue to compete. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thank you.